Hi, I'm Courtney Blackwell, and this is my neuron story. An event happens in cell A, causing a neurotransmitter molecule to travel across the synapse of cell A and cell B. Once the neurotransmitter molecule is in the synapse, there are four possible outcomes for the neurotransmitter molecule. One, the molecule can dissipate or float away. Two, the molecule can be taken back up into the presynaptic membrane through a process called reuptake. Three, the molecule can be metabolized or deactivated by enzymes in the interstitial fluid. And four, the molecule can bind to the binding site on the ionic tropic receptor located on the dendrites of cell B. Once binded, the neurotransmitter molecule causes a pore to open, which allows sodium ions to enter cell B. The sodium ions are able to pass through the pore into the cell because of two forces acting on it, electrostatic pressure and osmosis. Here we see that the sodium ions are more concentrated outside of the cell. Once the pore is open, the sodium ions are going to want to move inside of cell B to reach equilibrium. Electrostatic pressure is needed for the sodium ions to reach equilibrium. This oscilloscope reading shows the positive movement of the sodium ions into the neuron. At first, there is a short burst of depolarization, excitatory postsynaptic potential, or EPSP for short. When there are numerous neurotransmitting molecules, there is a summation of charge, the opening of the ionic tropic receptors, which are permeable to sodium. These charges, which take place at the axon hillock of cell B, reach negative 65 millivolts. This is called the threshold of excitation. The threshold of excitation is necessary to open the voltage gated channels and to begin the action potential. Once the action potential starts, there is a rising phase a falling phase, and an overshoot phase. The rising phase is characterized by a rapid depolarization, which stops at positive 55 millivolts. By the end of the rising phase, the sodium ion voltage-gated channels close, while the potassium ion voltage-gated channels remain open. Now the sodium ions are more concentrated in the cytoplasm. When sodium ions are stopped from entering cell B, potassium ions will want to move out of the cell as well. One reason for this is because the positively charged sodium ions are repelling the positively charged potassium ions. Another reason is because it wants to balance out the smaller amount of potassium ions which are outside of the cell. Once the potassium ions are out of the cell, there is a massive hyperpolarization which is also called the falling phase of the action potential. While the falling phase is happening, there is an overshoot. The overshoot takes place because the potassium ions are trying to reach their equilibrium at negative 75 millivolts. To get the cell back to resting membrane potential, or rest, the sodium-potassium pump activates and begins to pump out the sodium ions while drawing in the potassium ions. The action potential travels the axon by solitary conduction. Solitary conduction is when the charges jump from node of Ranvier to node of Ranvier, the spaces between the myelin sheath. Once the action potential reaches the end of the axon terminal, the calcium ion enters the cell and signals the movement of the vesicles containing the neurotransmitter molecules to the edge of the presynaptic membrane of cell B. The vesicles that move to the presynaptic membrane merge with the membrane and then create an omega complex. After creating the omega complex, the neurotransmitter molecules are emptied into the synapse of cell B and cell C, which starts the process all over again.